Uh, much needed win on Wednesday, a good victory. How important is it to build on that this weekend? Yeah, it's, it's quite clear. But for us, it's how we are. Every third day, you have to perform. And I think we are in a quite co consistent um, way in 24, in this calendar year. And um, yeah, we would have liked more wins in, but we don't lose as well. Uh, but yeah, this team, this club has to win and has to win every game. And so, yeah, when, you have, when you're winning on Wednesday, uh, you have then uh, to do a next win uh, three days after. And that is our challenge. Uh, it's a big test because Burnley is, is a team and uh, they are uh, going for the relegation. They want to avoid the relegation. Uh, they, uh, I would say it's very tiny for them. And so we have to be front foot. We have to be very aggressive and we have to match them because it's a big test for, for us against them. On Wednesday, you were able to give a debut to Ethan Wheatley, who became academy graduate number 250. It's a proud history of which you've played your part. Is developing young players one of the most exciting parts of the game for you? <laughs> no, there's many more, <laughs> but, <laughs> but it's definitely... Um, uh, we want to be a club and uh, young players, they bring in uh, a culture and uh, a playing culture because you can form them uh, from young age. And so they play a huge part in, in a selection like ours and in the DNA of Manchester United. Uh, Academy has always played a big role. I think about uh, the Bisbee Babes, think about the class of 92. And now, yeah, Ethan Whitley is the 250 the credit to make his debut, and which is great. And we worked uh, long for this. It was one of the area, one of our targets when I enter Manchester United, and togetherness uh, with Darren Fletcher, and togetherness with Nick Cox, um, with Travis, uh, to work on uh, a pathway that is possible. And uh, we worked on a way of play, and uh, we worked on uh, similar training methods and playing style to give those players a pathway to come through, but by the end of the day, the player has to deserve it. And we are very happy uh, that players like Carnaccio and Mino, they made it. And that I think is a very good example, and it will absolutely be an inspiration for all the academy players uh, that they now see it's possible to be part uh, of the first team of Manchester United and to be part for, for a longer term for this club. And that can help us because it will motivate everyone and it gives a good base uh, to be successful again uh, uh, next to uh, other areas like recruitment. It's a huge inspiration to our under-18s and actually the, in particular the four under-18s involved in your first team squad at the moment, you insisted they played in the under-18 Premier League Cup final. Why was it important that they did that despite playing in your squad 24 hours later? Yeah, I know it was maybe a decision and first against the first team, but to develop players, uh, to play, play matches is the most important tool you have. And so uh, every time when it's possible, I want to give them the game time uh, in their matches to develop and to progress. Back to your squad and the Burnley game. What's the latest with the team news? How's the squad shaping up? Yeah, it's, it's this, the same squad. Uh, apart from, and that is uh, uh, very enjoyable, that Mason Mount is returning into the squad. So, uh, very happy with that, of course. No updates on the longer term absentees? Any chance we see them before the end of the season? Mm, I think so. And, uh, some players, they return now uh, on the pitch. Um, Richard Martinez, Luke Shaw. Uh, uh, also, I don't think Victor Lindelof is not too far away as Rafa Farane. So, yeah, there are players returning. Uh, Johnny Evans, no, I don't want to forget him. Uh, so, yeah, there are players returning and I think that's what we need when we go in the last tough week, weeks from this season. Yeah, because you've had so many injuries, it's, it's been crazy. But Harry Maguire continues to be available. He's in a really good spell of form, scored in successive matches um, and the character he's, he's displayed. How important is he right now, Harry? I think he, uh, he make huge improvement um, in the se two seasons I'm, I'm here. He's in this moment really proactive, really confident. Um, 
yeah, stepping in, uh, driving the team forward, um, uh, making the switches, uh, going forward and defending proper and, uh, and tough and then scoring as well. Mm -hmm. So yeah, he's doing everything in this moment, what you can expect from a centre off. And he's alongside Casemiro at the moment. Can sometimes having a ball player midfielder like Casemiro in the defence help your build up? Does that help? You know, especially when it's Casemiro. <laughs> That's, hey, he is uh, magnificent when he is on the ball. Always find the right positions, always find the right decisions when he is on the ball. And uh, everyone can see he's a great player and he really contributes to our building up play. And just finally, we scored 21 goals now in our last eight games after some criticism before that, that we weren't getting enough goals. The last time we didn't score was West Ham before Christmas. So what have been the don't, main don't, factors? Don't mention this. No, I know. <laughs> Scrap that but, from the record. Um, but, but it's been a good goal. Your team scoring goals now. What's been the, the main change in this in this development? Oh, we worked a lot of our attacking game about um, decision-making, um, about movements and now you see we get connections and it's very difficult for our opposition also and we use our creation and the intuition of players uh, we call it the x factor and uh, when we do that uh, but don't make and we don't make things over complicated and we don't are selfish and we put our egos in front we really are connected we create a lot of chances and then we have players who are capable, uh, I would say all are capable to score a goal. Yeah, long may that continue. Good luck, boss. Thank you very much. You're welcome.